Hi, and welcome to this special video podcast of the Photo Brigade. I'm Warren Winter, and I'm a Chicago-based photo agent and recently turned publisher. And I'm sitting here with Brian Powers and Rob Hart, former photographers with the Chicago Sun-Times, who were unwisely laid off by their employers, and they're going to share a few thoughts with us here. So, guys, uh, did any of you have any idea this was coming? No. No? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> didn't you get some inclinations sort of the day before, Rob? Yeah, you know, I got a phone call from my photo editor. Uh, well, I was home, like, hanging out with my kid, and uh, he wanted all the serial numbers off of our equipment. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's ever worked at a newspaper knows when they call you and ask, what equipment do you have? That's your last day. <laughs> um, you know, and then we got an email at 5.30, like, after all of our assignments had gone out for the next day, that said, you have to come downtown for a meeting, which they never invite us downtown. Um, so Especially everybody in one spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we've never had the entire photo staff in one place ever. That mm -hmm. was the first and last time we were all really in the same place. So as you're all walking into this Holiday Inn boardroom, you kind of had a, a looming sense of uh, doom then. <laughs> there was extra security and stuff, so you kind of... Security? Yeah. They had goons there to escort you out in case it got crazy? Well, they had uh, an extra security guard at the door of the editorial floor because I walked in right behind John White, uh, and um, I, we were just kind of we were kind of chatting. And when I saw that extra security guard there, I, I was like, "Okay, this is going down." Was and he checking everyone's monopods at the door, sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> he should have frisked me. How about I was <laughs> kind of disappointed? Um, yeah. You know, but like walking in behind John, like he just had that bounce in his step, and he asked me if I shot the sunrise that morning, and. Uh, you know, like, I just thought, like, how bad could it be? Like, man, he's smiling mm -hmm. uh, after 44 years, so you know, what's the worst that could happen? Sure, sure. Um, you know, and I had talked to my photo editor that morning, like, uh, is this the kind of meeting where we bring all of our gear? And he said, I don't think so. So I didn't bring anything to the meeting just in case, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. What was your first reaction, Brian, when you found out? Um, when I walked in, the first person I saw was Rob, and... Uh, <laughs> He's like, we all got laid off. I'm going to Billy Goat. I'm like, are you kidding? And I, I you know, just I thought he was joking about it. And he's like, no, I'm serious. So I walked in, and everyone's just sitting there and just, just awestruck, like you know. So it was. Um, my first thought was, uh, I, I should probably start shooting <laughs> because I had a camera on me. So just a natural reaction. Sure. Yeah. Um, just to kind of help process uh, what was happening. But um, it was just kind of a surreal moment walking into the room and, and seeing uh, everybody there. And, Such yeah. a group of talent that just been wasted, basically. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, with the, the years that they had um, and the talent uh, that everybody kind of brought to the table, it was just kind of unceremoniously let go. Um, it was really sad. Yeah, yeah. Rob, you said you were honored to be fired in the same room as John White. Would you Wait like off. to elaborate? Wait, Wait off. off. Oh, I stand corrected. I don't want to say I was fired. Okay. Because, um, I, I, you know, that would mean I did... Like, I always dreamed... <laughs> that that's You're right. The, it's an important distinction. You were the, laid off. The, uh, the, the scene where Dave Chappelle quits in... Uh, <laughs> what movie is that? I, I, we, I don't know. This is the internet. We can probably say it. But, like, we all know what I'm talking about. Like, I always thought I'd be fired for doing something, for, like, standing up for journalism and be like, no, we have to. But, no, it was like, uh, every, everyone's being eliminated. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. And then they would got, like, Jim Kirk and the other guy in a tie walked out. I don't even know if they were in ties. I don't, honestly, like, that whole thing is, like, it's like getting punched in the nuts. And you're like, <laughs> what just happened? Uh, but you know, like being being uh, in a room with John at, at the beginning of your career. I mean, he was my first photo teacher. The like the second week I was in Chicago. Sort of a lifelong or a career yeah, I mean, mentor. Like, yeah, I mean, he was you know he was always like every time I saw him he was so positive and would ask you questions and you know he remembered everything. Uh, and then you know to be there at the end of that kind of chapter was. Uh, both amazing and heartbreaking at the same time because like I just I remember them saying like we're eliminating the entire photo department and I just kind of looked over at John and it was just like I'd never seen him ever not be super excited and just to see and like, what did he look like I, I mean I, it, it, he had the same face I think all of us did was just like holy shit did that just happen although he was not probably swearing <laughs> <laughs> he was probably thinking how am I gonna keep in flight um, <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, it was heart it was heartbreaking. I mean, because those guys were everything. I mean, you know, when I first moved here, like, you know, I, I like a lot of people come to Columbia College. Like, we wanted to be I wanted to be Andre Serrano, and then I met John, and I wanted to be John White. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was it, it's really it was really nice, I guess, for me to be there, kind of at that moment, kind of for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also super heartbreaking and definitely. Um, inhumane, I guess. Have you guys been hearing from the reporters since you all are laid off? I'm sure they can't be too happy about having to do double duty now, basically. Um, I've still been talking to, um, I worked out west in Naperville and Aurora, and um, I've been talking to a bunch of the reporters out there, and yet, yeah, um, you know, they're having difficulty adjusting, you know, to, to having to do both, and they're not happy about mm -hmm. it. It's not something that they, they wanted to take on. It's not something they, you know, are celebrating that it happened. Sure. How do you capture quotes and photographic moments simultaneously? Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, they don't want to do it, so um, they're pretty upset as well. <laughs> A lot of them seem to join you in the various protests out in front of the, the paper as well. That has to feel pretty good that at least they're standing behind you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for a lot of those guys, I mean, like, you know, they could be potentially putting their livelihoods in jeopardy, you know, being out there. I mean, because really, at this point, like, if, sure. you can, if you're going to be crazy enough to get rid of your entire visual department, what's one more reporter who's, like, sp speaking out for Just people's another rights? another number. And, you know, it's crazy that, like, that, I mean, well, th I mean, they've always, they've always been a very, very vindictive towards people who uh, speak out. I mean, if you look at what they did with, uh, like, David Roeder, who was uh, on the Guild Negotiating Committee, like, taking him out of a guild position, basically, you know, like saying you're, you're no longer a Sun-Times reporter, you now work for a rapport. Uh, just, you know, y you can't be on the negotiating committee if you're not in the guild. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, that's what they do, though. I mean, they're, they're all about you know, keeping their business going. I mean, they have a lot of salaries they have to keep propped up. So, you know, but that's what they want to do, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and speaking of reporters, you guys found yourselves recently with a lot of cameras pointing in your faces. You're now the story itself. As evidenced. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for example, I was having lunch with Rob at the Goat one day, and he can't even eat his grilled cheese without a reporter walking up and sticking a mic in his mouth. How do you guys feel about being the story all of a sudden? It's weird. Um, it, it's definitely strange. I mean, you always joke that it's, it's tough being on the other side of the camera, but um, especially the TV camera, um, to, to all of a sudden go to, yeah, exactly, you know, being being the story and having people wanting to follow you around and what are you doing and you know, can you talk to us about this? It's just, it was overwhelming at first and I think now it's, um, it's calmed down a little bit but um, it's, it's definitely taken some getting used to. <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely, um, it's definitely really shaped my perspective I think and I think actually after, you know, spending almost a year kind of teaching here at Medill uh, and talking about pictures for three hours and not, uh, a night, I think that kind of really gave me a lot of, uh, like, recharge my visual language to kind of talk, mm -hmm. to um, talk to the media. Um, but it's super weird because every reporter that you talk to, and if you do like TV or radio, um, they there's like their personalities, and they're always trying to inject their mm -hmm. little mm -hmm. personalities. And <laughs> you know, because I never really listen to the radio, you don't you don't understand that. Um, but it's so strange being like being a story when you don't want to. Yeah. Uh, I really feel for all those people that I've stuck my camera in their face all those years. Um, a well, lot more. You did a great job <laughs> dancing for the reporter at the goat that afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> you were literally just made to dance. Here's the microphone, dance monkey. Here yeah. you go. Well, it helps to have a beer first. <laughs> I mean, or two. Or two. Exactly. <laughs> so Brian, shortly after the layoffs, you were hired to shoot portraits of all of your colleagues, and uh, they were asked to bring items that were of significance to them throughout their careers at the Sun-Times. You know, how was that? How did it feel shooting your colleagues under the circumstances? Um, I, it was a huge honor. It was incredibly sad at the same time. Um, I mean, these are guys, uh, this was my first job uh, straight out of school. Um, so a lot of these guys um, really helped me, uh, you know, learn the ropes, you know, learn exactly what to do, what not to do. Um, it, the ins and outs of the business, if you will. So, I mean, mentors um, and good friends, you know. So, to see them in a position of vulnerability like this, it was very strange. Um, I, I was incredibly honored that um, 
I was there to photograph them, and everyone was extremely open mm -hmm. um, and supportive. And you know, whatever whatever you need us to do, Brian, we're you know t we're totally there. So um, it was it was kind of a surreal experience again, just uh, having to set up and having you know 23 people come through and, and photograph and really kind of open up in front of in front of a camera. You know, so for some in that studio setting for one of the first times, it was very cool. So I know a lot of you guys, especially a lot of your colleagues, as you were staffers, hadn't amassed a lot of up-to-date equipment. So what do you guys expect to be doing, you know, gear-wise, just to cover a freelance assignments and whatnot? Are you pooling gear? Are you going to just have to go out and put it on credit cards? What, what's the plan? Uh, yeah, I'm um, I'm sharing uh, camera bodies with uh, Tamara Bell, who is a fired uh, <laughs> photographer for us. Uh, but yeah, we just kind of switch off. Uh, you know, when she was shooting the bulls, I would lend her my camera. And mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. they've, uh, they're done, right? They're over with. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot easier. But, uh, you know, it, it's just a lot of us had started budgeting for this. I mean, I've been saving mm -hmm. money for a long time. You've been freelancing on the side for a long time as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so I started kind of amassing my own equipment. But still, uh, you know, having to give back stuff you've had for 10 years. Um, Even the stuff that didn't work, you were still probably attached to it on some level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it had been it been hanging off your body for you know ten years. So, uh, you know, it's it was kind of a it's sad, you know, because that's like it just feels like part of you. Well, it was so sad. You returned all your equipment in a diaper box. <laughs> <laughs> I realized that made me look like an an a hole. <laughs> uh, no. Somehow, I don't think anybody in the photo community thinks that. Well, <laughs> I think we all got a good laugh out of it. <laughs> It was both a necessity and uh, <laughs> and hilarity, <laughs> I think. So I think like both, like you know, you, like I didn't want them to have to carry a diaper box through the newsroom, but like I had no <laughs> other box, and then I realized how funny this was. So I'm like, let's go for it, <laughs> you know. So how do you think uh, some of your your fellow staffers or former staffers are holding up now? You know, they I'm sure some of them are doing just fine, or others having a hard time kind of adjusting. Have you heard from everybody? <laughs> The ones that I that um, you know I've kept in close contact with, um, they're, it's, they're having a hard time adjusting to it. Um, you know, long, long time staffers um, yeah. that have just um, been out of touch with with the freelance market. With kind of they haven't really kept up with how things are going in the market today. Um, you know, everything from from gear to websites to social media to mm -hmm. you know everything. So they're they're trying to play catch up all at once. Um, so I think for the photographers and editors that that didn't stay up to date, I think it's a lot harder to just be thrown into freelance um, versus a lot of a lot of us who have kind of been doing stuff on the side and keeping up um, on our own. But you know, pooling gear and everything mm -hmm. has helped has helped a lot. It keeps yeah. everyone kind of in contact and <clears throat> exactly. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I think the guys that like need probably need the most help. Um, are you know the people that I always looked up to, and um, you know we've been trying to do a lot of stuff to kind of lift them and get them rolling, and uh, you know like uh, Photo Brigade is really great with donating, getting do bags donated from Tenba, yeah, Tenba. And, and uh, Graph, Graph Paper Press has uh, donated uh, free websites, websites for life. So I mean I'm hoping I can live a long time to really get some benefit <laughs> from this. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, stuff like that is awesome. I mean, everyone in the photo community has been so great. And uh, I just got a print donated for the print auction we're going to have from um, the guy who runs What the Duck mm -hmm. comic strip. He sent us one. Nice. Um, that came today. I haven't even been able to open it. But I mean, everyone's been so cool. And I think that's one of the great things about the photojournalism community is we're just so tight to begin with. Um, you know, I was on the phone with a new client who used to be a reporter. And she said, you know, it's kind of like war buddies. I mean, that's how, like, mm -hmm, the photo, you know, photographers are. Because we spend so much time with each other, sitting there doing nothing. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, th I feel like the Chicago community, to begin with, was pretty close to it. I mean, you know, you guys do a great job with IPPA. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the summit and everything, it's, it's fantastic. And to see everybody come together within that community and then to bring in all the support that's come from, you know, even nationally, you know, has been... You know, Unbelievable. I, I was impressed with how much support you guys got from the staffers at the Tribune. I thought, yeah. you know, their public comments about, thank you for being such great competitors. You made us better photojournalists. You know, you made the city a richer place. I thought that was an incredibly classy thing. And I, I in a lot of other news, two newspaper towns, 
I'd be hard put to see that happening. Like in New York, for example, mm -hmm. do you think the New York Times staff would write such a nice complimentary letter if all of the photographers of the New York Post got laid off? <laughs> no. Probably not. Yeah. So I think that goes to sort of the community, the, the PJ love, as we like to call yeah. it, in Chicago. You know, there's a lot of talk about that PJ love. Um, and you've been showing a lot of it since the layoffs. You know, how is that manifest, do you think? What ways have you seen that, that bear out? Uh, I mean, initially with all the donations have, has been great. Um, you know, it's just been unbelievable. You know, people without resources are now able to, you know, I mean, a website, you know, what's a photographer these days without their website? Right. You know, um, it's just been, it's just been fantastic. Um, you know, the, the gatherings and stuff, uh, you know, the business uh, informational sessions, um, and even just the little side sessions, you know, you meeting with two or three other people and trying to share some knowledge and, mm -hmm. hey, I heard about this. Have you heard about this opportunity? You know, go check this out. Sure. You know, I talked to this person there looking for this work. You know, I think you'd be good for it. Um, it's just been really, really cool to bring everybody closer together. Yeah, I mean, even people that have <coughs> that have left, um, the, you know, like Bill Manley, who works at Sierra Nevada now, like they donated uh, eight cases of beer for our party last Thursday for the for these guys. Uh, you know, everybody just kind of wants to help. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as John used to always talk about PJ Love, and I always thought of it as like the force, you know, like it surrounds you. Um, <coughs> and I, I think this is kind of, like it's it's really come to play. Like, you know, this is the first time that like as a community we've been tested. Like, you know, how are you stepping up? How are you going to respond? And um, you know, I thought what you know what Alex Garcia and Scott Cerzani wrote was just it was it was really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, and both of them reached out to me like right away. Um, and you know, I was on the horn with Alex, and he was like, you know, he's called me a bunch of times like, how are you doing? And I'm always like, hey man, how are you doing? You still work at a newspaper? Like, what's your plan B? You know, so, so. scared yet? <laughs> yeah, I was like, you could be me. <laughs> so. Uh, but actually, so he, he calls to cheer you up, and you call to bring him down. I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like I, I think everybody needs to know this is like it's going to happen eventually. Check, yeah. Like we, we just, who knows who could buy the Tribune? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, the Koch brothers, the Koch, yeah. <laughs> they could be working in a chicken farm. We should <laughs> laugh about this. You yeah, know? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's you know that's the thing. Like, you know, there's a lot of money in that in that place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of money to be made at the Sun Times, clearly, uh, but it's not, it's not in producing newspapers. You know, there's a old historical quote that I'm going to kind of tweak for my own purposes, which you know, I would say, the newspaper that would sacrifice quality for profits deserves neither, and I think that's kind of what they've done on a high level here, is they've disregarded an entire aspect, an entire sort of pillar of the journalism standard of the the product, and thrown it away for sake of what they think will be an easier road to profitability. Mm -hmm. But in essence, when you erode the quality, the value goes along with it. Um, and actually, earlier today, I saw a quote on Jim Romanesco's site that was from a reporter that I, I thought was a little off base. And I wanted to read it here and get your reactions to it. It was from Chuck Sweeney, who worked for the Rockford Register Star. And he said, and I quote, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to take a good picture. When I started as a reporter at a small chain of small town weeklies in northern Illinois, we all carried cameras. They didn't have cell phones then. From the publisher to the ad salespeople, and we know how to use them. Any thoughts on that, guys? It doesn't take a what? It doesn't take a rocket scientist. Well, that's true. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to take a good picture. But you have to be like a, a decent human being that knows how to take a picture. I mean, like. It, I, I know plenty of reporters that can barely write stories, so, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, you know, I, yeah, I mean, if, if they think people who don't know how to do a job can do a job, like, hey, good luck. I mean, well, and I think even if you, if you are, you could be very good at doing both, but to be able to do both very well at the same time is impossible. Virtually impossible, absolutely. Uh -huh. I guess my beef with the comment is it just seems to so dismissively write off the photographers as mere button pushers and tries to elevate the reporter to this mythical status of, well, we can do it all anyway, so we don't need them anyhow. And I just, I can't believe that the majority of people in a newsroom today would agree with that sentiment. And uh, I, I seem to think you guys agree as well, yeah? Well, I think that's been part of newsroom culture for a long time, though. You know, there's, there's always that, 
that underlying battle between mm -hmm. stills and you know visuals and and reporters, um, and it's just it's just something that's always there. But I think in a good newsroom you can you coexist and you know, you know uh, I've had writers ask me for quotes because I was able to stay longer or get there earlier or get closer or, or even whatever. be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think great newspaper people of either side realize that words and pictures together create the most effective communication device we have in print. Mm -hmm. One or the other and you kind of fall short. You can't get the full story from looking at a photograph often. You can seldom get the full picture from reading a story. Mm -hmm. But the two together when done well can be fantastic and yeah. it's that disregard by some reporters that I guess I find so so irritating. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there's a, there's a time and a place. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's great that all the reporters have cameras. You know, yeah. that's that's fantastic. Um, you know, iPhones, whatever. I, I don't think it matters. But there's a difference between walking up to somebody and just taking their picture, and walking up, getting to know somebody, and then making their portrait. It's it's a very different thing. You know, a reporter walks up to a scene. They're asking what happened. Um, can you tell me? what was going through your head at the time and mm -hmm. when a photographer walks up to a scene they're thinking what's going on now you know what, what are you going to be doing you know mm -hmm. how can i tell what's going on um through my pictures so it's two very different mindsets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um do you guys have any final thoughts you wanted to add to this any uh lingering comments you just wanted to get out there stuff to get off your chest Rob? <laughs> come no. on i'm just fishing for a good quote here i know you are <laughs> I, I feel like we're just not performing to the to the high level. Though. Ah, we should have just uh, you know lined up a few beers in the goat. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're never going back to the goat. Like we have to go to the the really crappy one over here because no reporter knows that it, it it exists. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I just think that like I think a lot of us are kind of happy to be free. Uh, you know, I didn't. You know, I took paternity leave uh, at the end of last year and. January 1st, I was supposed to go back, and I called my boss, and I was like, I don't want to come back. <laughs> you know, I was like, I need two more weeks. You know, and I, I was not, I didn't want to go back, and I, I called my, my little brother who does human uh, HR, and he's like, man, but you're getting a month of vacation in, in February, so go back for two weeks, and then if you want to quit, walk out with your paid vacation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, that's kind of smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I went back and then I was like, I realized like, man, this job is kind of easy. I can do this. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, you know, it just felt like, like you were doing something that you didn't want to do every day. And um, they were just so wildly inefficient. I mean, I don't know, like, like we were calling in all day to the photo desk, like telling him where we were when like they're sending us to assignments. Like they know exactly where we are. So um, it, it was just like, it just felt like everything we did was so inefficient. And every time we kind of would pitch stuff, um, they would just fight it. You know, I mean, I was the first person to get multimedia on any Sun-Times website and <clears throat> in 2006. And I went to the editor and was like, I have this multimedia package. And she said it was incompatible with their CMS. <laughs> Which is crazy. Like it's a, it's Flash. You just embed it, <laughs> you know. And they like, they just like didn't, they didn't even know how to put Flash on their website. Um, so we buried it on a secure server, like out in Glenview. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, how'd you do this? And then it was kind of like I never heard from anybody again. Hmm. You know, it was like you had you had this immense talent out there that was basically uh, underutilized the whole time. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean. I'm so much happier. I mean, like I shot one assignment today for a corporate client, <laughs> and then uh, by noon I had my feet in the pool with my daughter, <laughs> and the photos were filed. Um, you know, I, I, what is it? Tonight I would probably be shooting some kind of prep sports thing, <laughs> uh, and just like counting the hours until I can leave. So I mean, you know, it's a much better lifestyle I think being freelance, but it's it's hard when you have a job. To like to walk away from it mm -hmm. because there's so many people that you you'd meet and be like oh you have the greatest job in the world and I was like yeah it's on awesome days it's awesome mm -hmm. so do you have any immediate plans for the future Brian um, but and I'm going right back to school um, oh, I'm gonna right. go finish my degree at Western Kentucky University um, I'm focusing on uh, as much video as possible um, you know my heart lies in stills but um, I feel like it's it's a skill that I should learn and uh, get more efficient at. Um, so, we'll be, be spending the next couple of years in the educational bubble. Yes, yes. Good choice. 
Rob, you started a blog, Laid Off from the Sun Times. <laughs> dot Tumblr dot com. Dot Tumblr dot com. I, I don't have the smarts to move it to my own U uh, URL yet. I'm working on that, though. Maybe Robert Kaplan can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I need an unpaid intern if anyone wants to be my unpaid intern. Uh, give me a call. Um, okay. But yeah, I did, and it's uh, it was crazy. Like I just thought I thought it was going to be funny because you know we all shoot with our iPhones all the time, and like I just shoot pictures for myself. You know, like we all do, like, oh, this is cool, I'm gonna take a picture. Like, we used to do that with our cameras, and I still do, but you know, sometimes, some days you just wanna do something different, and uh, um, pretty much anything that's both heartfelt and sarcastic <laughs> at the same time, like, I kinda You dig. in a nutshell. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, I thought it would be kind of a cool, just like, a way to vent, and I never thought that it, it would draw a million hits, like, in two days. Is that attracted uh, Le Monde and other international publications. You got a lot of attention quick. I did. You know, Al Jazeera called me and wanted to do something, which I, w I was like, why would they? You know, Kai Riz I, w I was this close to being interviewed by Kai Rizdahl, and then I got bumped <laughs> and then by John Wick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, I was like, oh, Kai Rizdahl. I love that guy. I can even spell his name correctly, which I'm not sure <laughs> anybody else can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I love Marketplace. But like, all these reporters that were calling me, I was like, oh, I love your publication. Um, you know, I read it all the time, and then they would ask you like really, really bad questions, and you're like, oh man. <laughs> so, um, but it's fun, you know. Like I just love shooting pictures, um, and you know, one of the things I hoped was kind of turn this into like a resource for other people who are in our situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been just like starting to do Skype chats with some uh, photographers to to put up, um, just you know, maybe to try to create like a uh, like a portal or. Um, you know, uh, a home base for people to kind of like learn from our situation because like this is going to happen. I mean, obviously, it's going to happen again somewhere. Yeah. You know, whether it's Denver or Minneapolis or Tuscaloosa, maybe not <laughs> Tuscaloosa. Well, it, it doesn't even have to be on such a grand scale. I mean, even <laughs> if if one photographer gets laid off, you know, it's it's just as devastating to that one person. Mm -hmm. um, so to have those resources out there, you know, to be able to find is really nice. <laughs> yeah, it's also nice to like. You know, to make like a couple bucks uh, for just shoot, taking iPhone pictures, and just you know, I mean, basically, like it's as much of an art project as it is experiment. Like, will people pay for content? Mm -hmm. Like, if it's good, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I've probably got I, 55 people have donated money towards it. Some people are giving me two bucks. Some people are giving me a hundred bucks. Um, not some people, one person. <laughs> uh, Hopefully, some people soon. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, and it's kind of like this grand experiment. Like, can you? Can you make money off of great content? Mm -hmm. You know, like if you take your content to the people and let them put a value on it, exactly. Will that value support you? Exactly. You know, like d kind of like do the exact thing, exact opposite that newspapers are doing. Like they, I don't believe they value their human content. Mm -hmm. Con what, human what's the word? Human. There we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, just look at the product. I mean, I think today I went on the, the page and they had a photo gallery from. Uh, Memorial Day, which was at this point 20 days ago. <laughs> it was on the main page of a daily newspaper. It had been sitting there for 20 days. Well, and they've got one poor intern who yeah. passed on a job elsewhere mm -hmm. who, uh, what, a few days after he started or a few days before he started, got word that the entire staff, everyone that was going to mentor him or he might have learned from, had been fired, laid <laughs> off, pardon me. Yes. And uh, there he was, the lone gun left in the office, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Poor kid. I mean, how's he getting by? Do you guys know? Uh, yeah, I, I took him out for beers last week. Um, Alex, I actually talked to him last night. Um, I'm actually trying to hire him to work for my new company and actually pay him. Hire him away from the internship? Yeah, yeah, that's, my, that's pretty much my goal. Uh, you know, because he's, he's a good kid. He's a good photographer. He's got a lot of drive, and, you know, he really needs someone. He struck me as a solid character. Yeah, he, he needs someone to mentor him. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's what you get when you join, like, a big daily staff is, like, mm -hmm. you get a bunch of people around you to ask questions. And now that there's nobody there, I mean, it's like a ghost town, I would imagine. Except yeah. for, you know, there are two photo editors, but uh, I, I imagine Rich and Jeff are really busy. So um, Not doing a lot of mentoring. Yeah, I mean, you can't. I mean, mm -hmm. you just can't. When you're, when you're booking assignments for that many newspapers with two people, um, I mean... It's just a survival mode. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, I hope we can actually pay him. I mean, I think it's inhumane to hire someone and not pay them. It's also illegal. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Not to mention inhumane, yep. but it doesn't meet any of the six criteria for a legal unpaid internship. So, but again, like you know, 
I don't know that they're thinking that far ahead. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video podcast on uh, Photo Brigade here. You can follow it on Facebook or at thephotobrigade.com. I want to thank Tenba for donating the bags to the SunTimes Heck staffers. Yeah. They thank donated you. a bag to everyone. It was a good <coughs> bag. And Graph Paper Press for donating free websites for life. And great templates. Great templates. It's a beautiful <laughs> yeah. service. Good e-commerce, good uh, archival services, good stuff. Anyway, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.